This is the story of Naima Ligon, age 16, an amazing and beautiful young teenager with a bright future ahead of her who was stabbed to death in a fight with other teens over sweet and sour sauce outside a McDonald's at 14th and U Streets in Northwest Washington. Unfortunately, one of her friends who she trusted was who stole her future away from her. The 16-year-old killer was arrested for the brutal killing. Naima Ligon was heading into her junior year at Thomas Stone High School with all the ambitions a teenager could summon. The 16-year-old was already planning for higher education. She had just started driving lessons, and a Krispy Kreme shop near her home in Waldorf, Maryland, had employed her as well. Naima had a happy, loving, and dreamy life, and her parents, Joy and Wireless Ligon, absolutely loved her. She was an amazing and beautiful young lady who always made everyone smile. Her brother and sister also loved her with all their hearts. She attended Thomas Stone High School, where she was popular with both students and faculty and was known for having a soft spot for the arts, hoops, and hair styling. Naima taught herself how to cut hair and frequently experimented with various styles on her friends and family. She was getting ready to receive her driver's license and start a new job as a donut specialist at Krispy Kreme, while also being interested in both higher education and a career. She was a regular adolescent who loved to party with her pals and sing along to her iPod. She was a young woman of great promise and potential, and it's easy to see why everyone around her loved her so much. Or so it seemed. Just one day before her new school year began, Naima got into a fight that changed her family forever. On August 27, Naima Ligon allegedly went out early in the morning to her local McDonald's for a snack with a couple of friends. But once they were outside, they allegedly had an argument over the sauce packets, which escalated to the point of a fight and ended with Naima getting stabbed twice in the chest and abdomen. At the intersection of 14th and U Streets in northwest Washington, she was tragically stabbed in what authorities believe was a confrontation between teenagers over sweet and sour sauce. Police have also detained a 16-year-old girl in connection with the murder. The incident took place around 2 a.m. on a Sunday, a week before the District of Columbia began implementing a juvenile curfew in specific areas of the city, including the U Street Entertainment District. Naima was an ambitious teenager with dreams, hopes, and goals that she wanted to achieve. After the incident, a private vehicle was used to transport Ligon to the hospital, according to the police. As soon as the police received a report of a teenage girl who had been stabbed, they arrived at the hospital shortly after 2 a.m. Despite the doctor's best efforts, there was no way to save the teenager, and she sadly passed away. This cruel and senseless act of violence abruptly ended a young girl's promising future. But who could do such a thing? Well, none other than a 16-year-old girl from Waldorf, Maryland, who was one of Naima's friends, stabbed her. Due, due to her age, police did not release much information regarding her. But the teenager was detained on Sunday in the death of Naima Ligon, also from Waldorf, authorities said. According to the police, she was arrested on suspicion of second-degree murder with a knife in her possession. Naima was with two other girls when the fight broke out, and another girl started punching the 16-year-old. When Naima and her friend went to get into a car, the suspect lunged at Naima with a seven-and-a-half-inch pocket knife and stabbed her multiple times in the chest and abdomen. At the end of the day, someone died over a dispute over sweet and sour sauce. The 16-year-old female suspect was apprehended a block away from the crime site and pleaded not involved, the juvenile equivalent of not guilty, at one of the hearings. Her defense attorney said that her client had claimed self-defense and that the other girls had initiated the brawl. Prosecutors, however, claimed the struggle ended when Naima was stabbed, considering that the defendant was the only person who brought a knife to a fistfight. Joy, the victim's mother, couldn't understand how a fight could lead to murder in an interview. 16 years old, her whole life was in front of her, but tragically, it was cut short. Another victim of youth violence in and around Washington, D.C. It's been nearly a week since Naima Ligon died after she was stabbed in Northwest by another 16-year-old girl. The family of the young girl is now talking about the life of their lost loved one. They shared their story with D.C. News Now's Dave Laval. Naima Lagan should have been with friends and classmates enjoying her junior year here at Thomas Stone High School. Instead, her family is now preparing her funeral. Naima was 
full of life. She was an amazing daughter. Joy Lagan only has the memories of her 16-year-old daughter. No parent brings their kid home from the hospital as a baby and expects to have a funeral 16 years later. Lagon died after she was stabbed, D.C. police say, by another teenage girl during a fight over sweet and sour sauce outside of Northwest McDonald's during the early morning hours of August 27th. Everybody's hurt. Everybody's, you know, upset because Naima did not deserve to die in the way that she was killed. I don't think any parent should ever bury their child. Naima's father, Wileys, is also having difficulty dealing with the loss of a young child. I have images when I close my eyes, and uh, believe it or not, I, the images that I do have, I like um, in terms of remembering her jovial and laughing and messing with me and messing, you know, messing around in the house. The Lagon family wants to focus on how Naima lived beautiful, intelligent, funny, clever, witty, like she just lit up the room. And she, my brother was a barber. Naima may have followed her uncle's career choice. She taught herself how to cut, um, and she cut everybody's hair in the neighborhood. Joy Lagon told us there are many questions about why her only daughter was in the district that night. What I can tell you is that Naima's a teenager. You know, there were rules in our house and Naeem is a typical teenager. That's what I'll say. Lagon says she's overwhelmed by the community's support and the comfort of friends. The phone just doesn't stop ringing. The phone's ringing nonstop. The texts are coming in nonstop. The door, people are knocking on the door nonstop. Naima's funeral will take place September 16th in Capitol Heights. She has her own sense of humor and style, and she was someone who really enjoyed life. Her mother described her as having an old soul because of her love of 90s R&B, and in an instant, the kid who helped feed and clothe the needy and who could talk to adults about events in the news with the same assurance as she mustered in discussing the latest dance craze was gone. Nothing prepares a parent for the funeral of a 16-year-old kid, and we can't imagine how they might be feeling. But Naima's mother is not the only family member having to cope with the death. Wireless, Naima's father, is having nightmares thinking of the incident. He sees images when he closes his eyes and, believe it or not, the images that he or anyone else would like. Her parents are constantly remembering their jovial laughter and messing around in the house. The family would like to remember Naima as she actually existed at this time, beautiful, intelligent, funny, clever, and witty, like she just lit up the room. She was truly the girl that connected the entire family, she even took her uncle's profession. Joy's brother was a barber, the rumor around the family was that she trained herself to cut and shave the locks of everyone she knew. She was her father's road trip buddy, and the two had regular trips to see his loved ones anywhere from Virginia Beach to New York. Naima's parents spoke about their daughter's numerous passions, including youth basketball and church, lamenting the fact that the seemingly insignificant nature of the deadly dispute has overshadowed the discussion about her young achievements. Naima's death has been devastating for her family, she was a beloved child, a loving daughter, and a great sister. Her family is making an effort to put the spotlight on Naima's life rather than her death. She was gorgeous on the inside and out, as well as witty and quirky, and she had big ambitions for her life, according to her friends and family. The family also appreciates the community's outpouring of love and support, but the constant stream of messages, calls, and visits has been too much to bear. They want the individual responsible for stabbing Naima to be held accountable for her conduct. They are also praying that Naima's death will bring attention to the issue of youth violence and the necessity of additional resources and interventions. The family is able to endure their suffering by clinging to their religion and their recollections of Naima. We deeply regret that this unfortunate incident happened, and we hope nothing like this happens ever again. May Naima Ligon's soul continue to rest in peace.